for disease control has uh, figured out ways that we can combat this and all this kind of thing like that. It might be where these new designer diseases like AIDS and Ebola and Hantavirus and all these kinds of things have come up out of nowhere and these diseases, in quote, uh, almost have a mind of their own. Yes, this lady here. Okay, lady asked, uh, is the tunnel building uh, uh, having a, uh, an effect with uh, earthquakes? Uh, uh, yes, it could very easily be, although uh, you've got to remember uh, a lot of these underground um, uh, bases are, uh, are constantly being repaired, and so a lot of people have to be hired. Uh, as far as uh, the U.S. government, the uh, second part of her question was, uh, uh, is the U.S. government modifying our weather? Yes, that's an affirmative. Uh, and we have uh, the U.S. government's been working with the Russians for at least since 1972 and maybe as early as 1966 on weather modification and it's a well-known fact and it's well employed and by the way uh, they can uh, literally weather modify a hurricane or a tornado out of existence and the reason they don't do it is uh, pretty obvious and yeah, right or they could actually uh, send a plane inside of a hurricane, for instance, that would uh, blow off a atmospheric bomb or a shockwave bomb in the eye of the thing, it would completely dissipate. Well, they don't do this, of course. And, uh, uh, there's probably other reasons for that, see which way it goes or what kind of havoc and how we can study the havoc and we go from there. Uh, this fellow way in the back in the black. How do we learn more about our general topic? Well, there's uh, this particular fellow, his name is Richard Souter, Ph.D., he wrote a book recently, Underground Bases and Tunnels, What is the Government Trying to Hide? That is one book. Uh, then we have uh, other, uh, here's a popular science article, Secret Air Base, the government doesn't want you to know that Groom Lake, uh, supposedly Groom Lake doesn't exist. Well, I guess if it doesn't exist, then me talking about it, I guess I can't be arrested or anything. I'm just you know, full of poppycock here. Well, the editor, Papa, one of the editors of Popular Science that put this article out is now in federal prison. Uh, then there's a, a book that uh, called Stealth Fighter Pilot. These books are available. I got this one at Dalton's. Uh, 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 this one actually was sent to me by the publisher. Uh, I did some test piloting, and the only thing I test piloted was uh, would run the aircraft back and forth on the runway, the special runways we built at Groom Lake. There's a picture of me in, in uniform. And uh, I can go on. And uh, These publications are out now, and, and they're available. Uh, yes, this lady over here. I can't hear you. What? Okay. Um, okay, that's uh, kind of a mixed bag question there. Uh, she asks, uh, um, with martial law being called, will uh, precious metals and all these kinds of things. First of all, hoarding anything will be outlawed. Uh, if you hoard food, have a radio, any way of communicating, uh, stash gasoline, uh, these kind of things, you'll just be rounded up and that'll be the end of you. Um, martial law is martial law. Martial law is dictatorship of the worst form, or one of the worst forms. And uh, uh, her other part of the question, if I, if I got it right, was uh, um, is it, uh, when's the alien takeover? Well, the alien takeover right now is, and probably will be for some, probably the next 10, 20, maybe 30, 40 years, will be basically in the, in, in the background. The idea is to get the, uh, the, the one world beast-like government order in place and to thin out the population of the planet. And then, of course, then all heck will break loose from then on. 
And uh, whether it is, uh, I, I don't often mix Bible and talk, but uh, uh, some people have alerted, well, this is already mentioned in the Bible, blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Well, that may be, but all I can tell you is, is uh, uh, I've been face to face uh, with one of these sinister characters, or a couple of them, at the thing the least, and uh, um, uh, most people would, uh, just the shock of them seeing such a thing would uh, cause them to. Uh, uh, not be in very healthy mode, frame of mind, as well, physical as well as mental. This man here in the blue coat. Well, it's a combination. Uh, the, uh, what technology is used to build these underground bases? Uh, uh, well, we have uh, lasers that can drill out, or basically deflagrate or melt out a tunnel seven miles a day. And that tunnel is 28 feet wide, 28 feet high. Uh, they have, uh, you've been told about uh, drilling and boring machines in a very slow quarter of a mile a day. Most of that went out in World War II. Most of that's all World War I or World War II era materials. And once again, you've been badly lied to. Uh, I uh, can hardly believe, first of all, I've worked on public engineering projects and we do better in grinding up road beds and re, uh, laying them down at the rate of four miles a day and uh, supposedly that doesn't exist. Well, I worked uh, on one you know, the state of Oregon just a few months ago and we built an, a tunnel for a, a sewage tunnel and whatnot like that. It wasn't very big. It was about six feet across. And I built, drilled right through solid rock, right to the uh, base of uh, under uh, one of the hills in Portland for their new uh, light rail. Did that in two days. But it was a complex, it was a small complex tunnel. It was big enough for a man to crawl through and inspect. And I was one of the people that inspected, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what technology? Uh, a lot of this is alien technology, uh, readapted for our own use, but a lot of it's our own ingenuity too. So uh, uh, you can bet, uh, how can you tell alien technology? Well, anything that's just absolutely outlandish, like uh, taking a uh, uh, oxyacetylene welding torch and trying to cut into this metal and getting nowhere, obviously, would be uh, uh, metals research. Uh, um, aircraft research and the like, and different tools and products, which are things that are uh, many times the hardness of diamond or, or known uh, hardened substances, uh, substances like uh, borazon. Um, obviously, that's uh, nothing that we came up with on our own. But we could have over a several hundred year period. But you've got to remember, too, that the military technology is outstripping the public sector technology at the rate of 44 to 45 years of technology for every calendar year, every 12-month calendar year here. So every year going by, by uh, this time in 1996, the military uh, uh, technology will be roughly 45 years more advanced than where we are today. So it's quite possible that way back in 1943, the, uh, not, the U.S. Navy not only caused the ship to disappear, it literally disappeared and reappeared. Uh, basically, military technology right now is about 1,200 years more advanced than uh, public state technology. And computer technology right now, uh, it's off the scale, I can't tell you. It's just uh, right now and uh, employing uh, just in black jet and, uh, and stealth aircraft, uh, the new computers are so completely advanced that uh, we couldn't get them in the public sector for maybe another 40 or 50 years. Yes, this lady here. Uh, Well, the lady asked with the slave labor camps, are the old, the infirm, the handicapped, are they going to uh, 